Hello, fine people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants, both indoors and outside. In today's video, we're talking about the difference between hay and straw mulch. So what spurred this video for me is I'm seeing a lot of people posting about the mulches that they're using in their garden. And most of these are American gardeners because they're way ahead of the curve when it comes to transplanting and seeding outdoors. And the two common things I'm seeing is people using hay and then I'm seeing people also use straw. Then I'm also seeing people intertwine the two names which can lead to confusion and there is actually quite a big difference if we're utilizing these in our soils. So with that being said we're going to be looking at this and we're going to be discussing why sometimes and how to avoid getting those straws or hay that potentially can contain glyphosate or some sort of persistent herbicide that we obviously do not want in our garden that can actually impede things like germination and just cause transplant nightmares. So let's just jump straight into it. So straw bales are leftover um, bases, I guess you could say, to cereal crops. Now, it's not uncommon for farmers to do this, but it's also not super common either. It is the golden bales. And typically when we look at straw, they will have a hollow center and they will be golden in some color. And that's an indication of straw. Hay is different. Hay is what we feed to animals. So hay can be more expensive because it has food value. Because straw is got no nutrient content and it is literally a byproduct from harvesting, it is incredibly less expensive. So it is way cheaper to purchase straw over hay. One of the reasons why farmers will bale straw comes down to the fact that it doesn't biodegrade easily. So for anyone who farms, you already know this, but as we harvest, we tend to cut the heads off of our crops and then we will mulch or spray uh, the rest of the back of the combine off the shaker table and it kind of just deposits on top of our soil surface. Most farmers will leave that there over the winter because it prevents against uh, soil erosion. It can actually help capture some snow, but in some cases it builds up too much and it becomes really difficult to actually seed into because it gets caught around the openers or the boots as we like to call them and it can just be a whole thing. So some farmers will uh, harrow this or in some cases farmers will actually bale it. So once it's baled, it is, like I said, not easy to decompose, meaning if we use straw in our garden, it is gonna be there for several years. It's not going to disappear easily. Not only that, but it doesn't decompose particularly well in compost either. So it takes a really time, long time to decompose. Now different straw is going to have different um, decomposition rates. Some are gonna be faster, some are gonna be slower, just to keep that in mind. Now hay, because it's used to feed animals, it's dried, but it tends to be a lot heavier. It is not hollow in the middle and it contains a ton of nitrogen. So this means it decomposes pretty darn quick. It's the equivalent to grass clippings. Now the question comes, what's the better choice for your garden? And it ultimately comes down to your budget and also what is local in your area. But I can give you some tips and tricks on what you should or should not go with. First off, the more likely that you to actually contain weed seeds or just seeds in general is actually the hay version. So with straw, because we want the grain and the byproduct is the straw, we don't tend to see as many weed seeds. With hay, however, we can see those seeds weed seeds. So that is something to keep in mind. If you are using hay, there is a likelihood that you're going to have volunteer whatever the heck was planted, whether that be alfalfa or some weeds that slipped in, clover, you name it. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, another thing is the actual pesticides used. When it comes to straw, this is like I said, a byproduct of grain. And so because of that, it's meant for human consumption. This means the types of pesticides used on it prior to it being baled are pesticides that tend to have a half-life of a maximum 54-ish days. And that is because of FDA and Agriculture Agri-Foods Canada's laws. 
Now, there is an exception with the hay or the forage crop bales, and this is because they are allowed to use persistent herbicides. So persistent herbicides are essentially herbicides that are meant to be applied to a field that are there to last a longer period of time. And when these pesticides are applied, their intended purpose is to be used on a field that is supposed to have a life cycle of anywhere from three to five years. This means, typically speaking, persistent her herbicides such as aminoprylate can last for up to 500 and some days, which for most of us means about two years or two and a half years of actual gardening time. And if you're in a cooler climate, um, and depending on how the bales were stored or where they're located, all that sort of stuff, it can take longer for it to decompose and disappear. This means, for the most part, if you're physically looking at a bale of hay, it likely, if it wasn't grown organically, can contain a persistent herbicide, which ultimately can affect your crop as it is leached into the soil around it and around the surrounding plants. So I would encourage you to simply use a straw mulch whenever possible. It is your cheaper option. It is your lighter weight option. It lasts a heck of a lot longer, meaning you could reuse it for up to two, maybe three years, again, depending on your climate. And you don't run the risk of there being persistent herbicides. With the straw, you can always ask the farmer that you're actually getting it from what type of herbicides were used on it, and if they say things like glyphosate or whatever the case is. So long as it is less than 70 days, you can use it. So if it was baled last fall and it's been sitting there since last fall, there's no reason why you cannot use that on your garden. It'll be completely fine. However, with the hay, if they said they use any herbicides whatsoever, you want to avoid it entirely. And you actually also want to avoid it for your compost as well. I think some of the source for the composting issues that we see at the city, for example, I've noticed it in Saskatoon at times where it almost seems to stunt the growth of some plants is due to people composting things like hay or um, use of persistent herbicides on their lawns and that sort of thing because we are a farming community so we have access to those um, herbicides and I don't think people realize that some of these more intense ones can last in our systems for a longer period of time and I did an entire video on glyphosate and in it I completely stress the fact that there's much scarier herbicides out there and uh, persistence herbicides are one of them so stick with the straw the golden hollow if you can drink a smoothie through it or you can take a sip of coffee out of it it looks like a stir straw in the middle that is what you want to choose if it looks like a blade of grass or you can't see through the center or the bale feels really heavy compared to a straw bale you want to stay away from that one because you just never really know but i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and i will talk to you guys next time bye